will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. You know the Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Know the Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be Shall I be saved from my enemies? You know the Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Know the Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Good morning. We bring you greetings from the Greenville Avenue Church of Christ as we live stream our morning worship service. We're so thankful for all those that are here in attendance this morning. Uh, we're so thankful for those that are visiting with us this morning. We ask that you please fill out a blue visitor's card so that we may have a record of your attendance. And also to our members, we ask that you please fill out all of the appropriate cards and the response card if you're responding to the minister's invitation. To, our, to those that are in uh, being streamed to, if you are members, we, the leadership, we're uh, beseeching you to please come back to service. We would love for you to come back to uh, service uh, if you're not providentially Hindered. This morning, we will begin our morning worship by reading from the Word of God, and we ask that you please stand at this time. We're going to be reading from 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 28 through 29, and we ask that you please repeat after me. Give unto the Lord, ye kindred of the people. Give unto the Lord. Glory and, glory and strength. Give unto the Lord, unto the, Lord. The, glory the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering, Bring an offering. And, come and come before him. Worship the Lord, Worship the Lord. In, the in the beauty of holiness. Let us together pray. All wise and eternal God, again we approach thy throne, thanking you, Heavenly Father, for allowing us to rise this morning and to come out and worship thee in spirit and in truth. We pray, dear God, and we're so thankful for the gift of your son, Jesus. Pray that we will all grow to be Christ-like day by day. We pray, dear God, for the minister of the hour this morning, Brother John Bradshaw, as he come before us and bring unto us the word of life. Give him a re recollection of those things that he has so studied and prepared. We pray that we, the audience, will open up our hearts and minds ready to receive the engrafted word which is able to save our very souls. Be with us and guide us, dear God, as we go through our worship service this morning. We continually give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. I am going to hide, hide behind, hide behind the mind. I'm dead. Where the chill 
until it wins. Don't blow. Well, I'm gonna hide, hide behind, hide behind the man. I'm telling you, I am gonna hide behind the man. I'm telling you. Good morning, good morning. Thank you. I know we had some te technical difficulties a little bit um, ago, but you hung in there with us, and we appreciate that so much. Bear with me. You know, when you get so old, you forget your songs. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do a, um, I'm going to do a quick change on you. Um, so, so bear with me. A mansion robe and crown, mansion robe and crown. We'll sing one verse of this song and then we'll be directed to scripture reading and prayer. I'm gonna trade my earthly home for a better one, bright and fair. Christ left to prepare a mansion for his children in the air. Well, I'll join him in that land where tears no sorrows can be found. Where Scriptural text for this morning's lesson will be Job 
the second chapter, and that's verses 6 through 10. That's Job, the second chapter, verses 6 through 10. And it reads, The Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a posture to scrape himself with all. And he sat down among the ashes and then said his wife unto him, Does thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. So we all be standing for our second prayer. Let us bow our head in prayer. Heavenly Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, dear God, we want to pay homage to you this morning, dear God, thanking you, Heavenly Father, for just being our God. We thank you so much for all that you do for us, Heavenly Father, all you continue to do for us, and we're just so grateful, Heavenly Father, for your mercy, your grace. The power is in you, Heavenly Father, and we always want to look to you, Heavenly Father, what comes our help and our strength. We thank you, Father, this morning. We ask you, dear God, for forgiveness of our sins, dear God, whether it be word, thought, or deed. We ask that you toss it in the sea of forgiveness, Heavenly Father, that it do not rise up against us in the day of judgment. We just want to just, Heavenly Father, just always pay homage to you, Heavenly Father, because you are just so worthy to be praised. We admire you, dear God, and we just in awe of the things that you do, Heavenly Father, in our lives, Heavenly Father, and we, we want to always appreciate you, Heavenly Father. We want you to teach us to appreciate, Heavenly Father, your providence, which sustains us daily. We just thank you, dear God, for all you do and all you continue to do for us, dear God. We want to fervently pray, dear God, for this church. Fervently pray for our elders, our deacons, our ministers, Amen. our visitors, Heavenly Father, Amen. even those that are lost, dear God. We just want to fervently pray, dear God, that, that you continue to bless us, Heavenly Father, to be spiritual servants, Heavenly Father, to continue to build up thy kingdom, Heavenly Father. Help us to acknowledge us as servants for your work. Heavenly Father, we just pray, Heavenly Father, for the one who's going to come to bring us the, bring to us the bread of life, Heavenly Father. We just ask, dear God, that you bless him, Heavenly Father, that you bring to his remembrance the things that he has studied. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that the words that we receive today, Heavenly Father, we pray that it fall not on deaf ears, Heavenly Father, but that it, it, it germinate within us, Heavenly Father, that we can take it to our hearts and souls and minds to help us be a better people for your kingdom. We just thank you so much, Heavenly Father. We just ask that you continue to bless us, bless the sick and the shut in, bless all and bless us all this, that, that's in the sound of my voice, Heavenly Father. And we most of all want to thank you for your beloved son, Christ Jesus, our Savior. We thank you, Jesus, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, for, for, for giving us this, this avenue of prayer, Heavenly Father. We just thank you for him dying on the cross, Heavenly Father, that one day we may be with thee in our heavenly kingdom. We just ask that you bless the service there, God, and we pray that it's acceptable to thee, Heavenly Father. And we just want to give you the glory, 
and honor and the due that you rightfully deserve. This is our prayer. This is the blessings that we ask for. As in your beloved son, Christ Jesus' name, let us all say amen. amen. Holy Spirit, dwell in me and touch my eyes that I might see. Stay beside me every hour. Be my drink, be my living bread. Keep me sheltered, keep me fed. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, dwell. As we prepare for communion, we'll sing one verse of it, because he lives, because he lives. God said in his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, he from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and it reads, For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Shall we now pray? Father God, we thank you for such a sacrifice, such a love that was so strong that you gave your only son. And he made that sacrifice that we all may have access to you, Lord. We thank you for that this day, and we thank you for that every day as we take this communion in remembrance of that sacrifice. Amen. I can face tomorrow because he lives or fear.
I'll cross the river. I'll fight life's fire. No war with pain. And then as death gives way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory and I know He lives because He lives. I can face tomorrow because He lives. Please stand. All of him is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because. As we prepare for the message for this morning, we'll sing, Salvation Has Been Brought Down. Salvation Has Been Brought Down. Following song, we'll have a message for this morning. Our song of invitation is Restore My Soul. Jesus gave his life for a ransom, yonder old cavalry, old Mount Calvary, that cruel cavalry. Yeah. 
comforting, motivating, invigorating thought and reality that salvation has been made available to all men. Jesus the Christ gave of himself that we might be made the righteousness of God. I don't know about you, but that is just enough to make you shout, make you cry, just to make you thankful for the God that we serve. God has been good to each one of us. And the reason I know that is because you're here. Your presence is an indication of God's goodness. And we want to be mindful of uh, many of our members who are hurting and experiencing different challenges in this life and still knowing that God is good. We want to keep Brother Worthy in our prayers. He is in Lubbock. He may mention on last week his mother's condition, and we want to uh, keep him, his family, and his mother in our prayers uh, that God will do what only God can do. And we're just going to keep trusting in him, and uh, I know he will appreciate all of you and your prayers for him and his family. I want to consider Job chapter 2, the passage that was read in our hearing. Verse number 6, And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a potsherd to scrape himself with all. And he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this, did not Job sin with his lips? Shall we receive good and evil at the hand of God? Someone may ask, how can God be sovereignly good, 
given the suffering among apparently innocent people, and yet the wicked prosper. Throughout the world and in religion, this question of God's goodness and the existence of evil has produced much debate. How do we reconcile this issue in the mind of the non-believer as well as the believer? And I think as we look at the events in the life of Job, it gives us insight to answer this question. And I want us, before we look at the answer, to explore the situation. If I were a playwright or a screenwriter, this dramatic narrative could easily be divided into acts and scenes. The cast features Job, God, Satan, Job's wife, and Job's three friends. And act one, scene one, would be Job's profile. Job, a man from the land of us. He's a man of character. The Bible describes him as perfect and upright. He feared God and eschewed or shunned evil. He's a family man. Obviously, he is married. He has seven sons and three daughters. He's a man of substance, 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camel, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she asses, and a great household. But not only that, he's a spiritual leader. He offered burnt offerings according to the number of his children, just in case they sinned. But then there's the scene where that is perplexing and mystifying, for God is in a dialogue with Satan. In Job chapter 1, the Bible says, There was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before Satan, before the Lord, and Satan came among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And God, the Lord, makes a recommendation. Have you considered my servant Job? There's none like him. Nobody like Job in all the earth. He's a perfect, upright man, one that feareth God, sheweth evil. He recommends Job as a prime example of piety and fidelity and faithfulness. And God allows Satan to test and try him. But he says the only restriction is don't touch his life. So then a day comes, another scene, where a day of destruction in Job's life, in, in Job 13 through, uh, Job 1, 13 through 22, he, he loses his 500 oxen, 500 donkeys. He doesn't lose them, they're stolen. Somebody comes and steal them. His servants are murdered, and one escapes survives to tell the story. The next servant comes in and tells him the fire of God. While he was yet speaking, the fire of God, which was possibly lightning, lightning 
burns all of Job's 7,000 sheep and his servants. But one servant lives to tell the story. 3,000 camel are stolen while he received news. The next one came in while this man yet spake with another report. Says, says, your camels are gone and the servants are murdered. And once again, while he was yet speaking, another servant comes in and says, your children were eating and fellowshipping in their oldest brother's house and a strong wind came out of the wilderness and blew the house down and all of your children are dead but I have escaped to report the news and with all of his substance gone Job arose in Job chapter 1 and verse number 20 tore his robe fell to the ground and cried, fell to the ground and cursed, fell to the ground and wept, fell to the ground and blamed God. Is that what the Bible says? No, he fell to the ground and worshiped. Everything gone. He worshiped and said, naked came I out of my mother's womb. Naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But the conclusion is, in all of this, all of his loss, Job sinned not. Amen. Nor charged God foolishly. Then you come to the second chapter. Satan is again going to and fro throughout the, world, throughout the earth. And, Joe, and God recommends Job again. Consider my servant Job. He has the same references. He's a perfect man, upright, fears God, eschews evil. Have you considered him? I already messed with him. Look at him again. There's none like him in the earth. And then he adds this about, him. he still holds to his integrity. And I found this interesting. Although you moved me against him to destroy him, Without a cause, Job had done nothing to cause all of what he was experiencing. And so God permitted Satan. He said, you know what? The devil said, Satan said, well, you let me take his stuff. But if you let me touch him, if you let me mess with his skin and his flesh, he'll curse you to your face. And the Lord permitted Satan to take Job into his hand, but he restrained him. He said, but save his life. And that's where our text is. Satan struck him with sore, painful boils from the sole of his feet to the top of his head. And Job sat down in ashes and took a piece of pottery to scrape his skin. And his wife, she wasn't in his bio introduction. This is our first introduction to Sister Job. She comes on the scene 
She's a grieving mother. Lost all of her possessions. All of her children. You got to see Miss Job, Sister Job, is a hurt woman. And now she's looking at her husband sitting in ashes, scraping himself with pottery because she looks at his hands and arms and there are painful boils all over. Looks at his legs and feet and there are painful boils to the top of his head. She's looking at her man. And she said, do you still maintain your integrity? Are you still going to pray? Are you still going to worship? Are you still going to offer burnt offerings? You still going to praise God? You still going to maintain your faithfulness? Have you seen yourself? Look at you. Look, look at our fields. They've been burned. They, they've been looted. We've been robbed. Look in the house. No children anymore. Used to have a house full of kids. They're gone. And you still are going to maintain your integrity? Why don't you just curse God and die? I found it interesting that she didn't say, we should curse God and die. Both of y'all lost everything. She said, you. <laughs> Oh, I could play on that. But she said, you curse God and die. And Job rebukes her and says, you speak as one of the foolish women speak. And he asked this question, shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? And this rhetorical question. Job knew the answer to this question, but it's still relevant today. We, 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 shall we receive good and evil at the hand of God? Job knew there was purpose in pain. That God can use good and evil to accomplish his purpose. But the problem is, we can't reconcile it in our mind how God can use good and evil to accomplish his purpose. I want to tell you, I want to show you how God uses good to accomplish his purpose. And I want to show you how God uses evil. And then I want to show you your purpose. Show our purpose as it relates to what God is doing. Now, Job recognized all that he received because he said, shall we not receive good? All of my possessions was due to the goodness of God. When Satan challenged Job's faithfulness, he knew God had been good to him. He said that you got all this stuff hedged up around him. You got a hedge about him. But take away the hedge. See if he don't curse you to your face if you remove all that goodness you've given him. And you know what? We know. I don't have to tell you long about the goodness of God. You go to the refrigerator and there's something in there. God is good. You got a car that starts when you Amen. put the key in. God is good. You got a home that when you turn on the lights, they work. God is good. We know about the goodness of God and we'll, 
We'll jump and harp on the goodness of God. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. God showed up and did what? Showed. We'll get on the goodness of God. God is good all the time and all the time. Yeah, we will, we will, we'll get on the goodness of God. But I want you to understand why does God, how God uses his goodness. I want you to go to Jeremiah 32 and verse number 40. The Bible says in Jeremiah 32 and verse number 40, and I will make, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from doing them good. But I will put my fear in their hearts so that they will not depart from me. The reason I'm going to do them good because I want them to be faithful to me. Look at, look at Romans chapter 2. Verse number 4. I'll just tell you, or do you despise the riches of his goodness? The riches of his goodness. God's goodness is abundant. And forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee. To repentance. God says, I'm going to use my goodness to keep you faithful. I'm going to use my goodness to bring about holiness in you. How can you rebel against God who's been so good? I want to tell you, there are some times when it seems to us that he didn't do it. There are some times that it seems to us, God, did you show up here? It's sometimes in the times where you were praying about something and it didn't turn out and you want to know, God, where are you? In those times, we need to understand that God can use evil to accomplish his purpose. Oh, and I know that messes with our perspective of a good God. But I want to just show you, let me tell you something, that evil has a broader meaning than just sin. It means, it comes from a root word to spoil, to break in pieces, being broken and made worthless. So it is essentially that which is unpleasant, disagreeable, and offensive. Job receives evil from the Lord. In Job 2, 3, God said to Satan, you moved me against him to destroy him without a cause. I'm afflicting Job without reason. I'm destroying him. I'm breaking him without valid justification. The prophets regarded God as the ultimate cause of evil, as expressed in pain and suffering or disaster. In his sovereignty, God tolerates evil in the universe. Though he overrules and uses it in his administration of the world. I want you to see, go to Isaiah 45 and verse number 7. 45 and verse number 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. 
I, the Lord, do all of these things. I, the Lord, do all of these things. Oh. Look at Proverbs 16 and verse number four. I wanted you to see it. Proverbs 16, verse number four. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Who? The Lord made all things for himself, even the wicked for the day of evil. You mean to tell me God will use the bad? The ugly for his purpose. You remember Saul? When God rejected Saul from being king, in 1 Samuel 16, verse 14 and 15, and I know, I know this is a, a lot on you. I'm going to be where you want me to be after a while. But y'all just. Stay with me on this real quick. First Samuel 16 and verse number 14 and 15, because I know this ain't shouting stuff. This stuff blows me away. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit. From who? From the Lord troubled him. Verse number 15, and Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from who? God. Troubling you. We don't, we don't understand. How does God do that? Why would God do that? See, that's our question. But I want to show you, God has a purpose in all of it. When you look at when you look at the story of the children of Israel in Egyptian bondage, all oh, if you read through there, it kept saying, the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. The Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. And you know what we try to do? We try to explain that away. Well, God could not. The Bible says the Lord Harden his heart. And if the Bible says that the Lord hardened his heart, the Lord, the Lord hardened his heart. But you want me to explain to you. Let, let, me, let me see if I can help you. Get for me Romans chapter 9. Because we got to see why would God do this? Romans chapter 9. I know this is a lot of scripture, but, uh, and this is, ain't Bible class, but Romans chapter 9 and verse number 10. And not only this, but when Rebecca also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, verse number 11 says, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. He's saying God is doing something for his purpose. Verse number 12 says, it was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. Jacob and Esau. Esau is going to serve Jacob. Oh, if we had time to go to Bible school, but we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't have no more time. Number 13 says what? As it is written, Jacob, I have loved, but Esau, I have hated. Verse number 14 says, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? Because he made a choice. 
made a selection, made a move. Paul said, God forbid. You mean to tell me even when we don't understand what God is doing, God is still good. Verse number 15 says, for he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I will have. What are you saying? God says I'm sovereign. I can do what I want to do when I want to do it. However, I want to do it. Verse number 16 says, so then it is not of him that willeth nor of him that runneth. You can put all the effort you want to, but God shows mercy. Verse number 17. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, remember I told you God hardened Pharaoh's heart? Even for this same purpose I have raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, that thou might, that, that, that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. You want to know the reason I hardened Pharaoh's heart? Because I wanted to show him my power. Amen. I wanted the whole world to see there's a God in Israel Amen. who knows how to deliver. Amen. Verse number 18 says, therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy and whom he will harden. God says, I can do it. I want to do it. And so what happens is we see this and we need to see that God has used evil, calamity, adversity to accomplish his purpose. Isn't that what Joseph said? You meant this for good, for evil, but God So it brings about a dilemma in us because we as inquisitive human beings can't wrap our mind, can't wrap our mind how God does what he does and why God does what he does. But can I tell you something? You need to recognize God's purpose for you and for me. See, the problem of evil is a psychological problem. We can't wrap our minds around it. We want to know why God does what he does. And we got to remember our purpose in creation. Go back to Job chapter 1. Go back to Job chapter 1. In his pro profile, verse number 1, Job, a man in the land of us, whose name was Job, the man was perfect and upright. And watch what the Bible says about him. One that feared. Verse number eight. Jesus, I mean God, the Lord said unto Satan, has thou considered my servant? Job, there's none like him in the earth, perfect and upright. One that feareth God. He kept on showing him. Job fears me. Why didn't you sin, Job? Because I fear God. Why didn't you charge God foolishly, Job? Because I fear him. On the second occasion of his trial, God introduced him again as a man that feareth God. Why are you maintaining your integrity, Job? Your wife is asking you, why? Why? Because I fear God. And I hear the ecclesiastical writer say, in Ecclesiastes 12 and verse number 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep 
his commandment. For this is the whole duty of man. This is our job. To fear God and keep his commandment. Well, I just want to know, that ain't your job. That's not my lane. It's not my lane. God has not revealed everything to us, neither could we grasp it if he did. Deuteronomy 29, verse number 29 says, the secret things, the secret things belong to whom? God. Oh, if somebody can put it up on the screen, I want you to see it. The secret things belong to God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. What did you reveal? My commandments. My word. So, so, so. You know, our role, my role, is to fear God and keep his commandments. I'm not equipped to tell you why bad things happen to good people. I wish I could, no I don't, no I don't. I don't even wish I could understand. How does a teenager go into an elementary school and shoot 19 kids? And two teachers. Such knowledge is too wonderful. But I tell you what even though I don't understand it. I understand that I'm called to come to worship. Amen. I can't tell you why. My 43-year-old cousin died from cancer. But I do know that I got to fear God and keep his commandments. Can't tell you. One of our youth lost his mother to cancer. Wanted me to answer why did his mother die? I can't. I can't tell him what God is doing. All I can tell him is trust God, keep your integrity, come to church, worship him. I don't know why he left. I don't know why your husband left. I, I, but you got to still fear God and keep his commandments. We, we, we want answers to stuff that God is not even trying to give us answers to. He said, won't you just do what I told you to do? Let me be God. So I got to honor and praise God in the good and the evil. All I can tell you is praise God when things are going good. Praise him when things are not going so good. Praise him in the sunshine and praise him in the storm. Praise him when you got an answer. Praise him when you don't. Praise him in my trials and praise him in my triumphs. We sing that song, trials dark on every hand. And we cannot understand all the ways God will lead us to that blessed promised land but he'll guide us with his eyes and we'll follow till we die 
we will understand it better by and by I don't even know if in the by and by I will understand it but it's all right as long as I make it to the by and by I wish I could I wish I could my limited my limited intelligence will not even let me comprehend it. You remember Job? Job said, I want to ask you some questions, God, and let me see. And God said, gird up your loins like a man. Where were you, Job? When I laid the foundation of the earth, where were you? Who, who supplies? Do you know the storehouse? where the snow is. Job, when you answer my question, then I'll answer your question. And at the end of his life, well, at the end of his, his refutation, he didn't even refute God. He, he just had to stand there with his mouth wide open because he couldn't answer a question. And when God finished, he put his hand on his mouth and he told him, such knowledge, I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm paraphrasing. He said, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. And you know what he did? He repented. We need to repent. When we have elevated, see, if I could answer these questions for you, I might as well be sitting on the right hand. Come on, yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. On the right hand of God. Amen. 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 There are just going to be some things, some things in this life that we're just going to have to deal with. But, but, but while we deal with them, keep trusting God. Keep holding on to God. Don't stop coming to worship because something bad happened to you. A little boy was sailing his boat in the pond. And the boat had gotten too far for him to reach it. And the man saw him trying to get his boat back. And what the man did, he started picking up rocks and throwing it on the other side of the boat. And he kept throwing rocks on the other side of the boat. And what happened was the splashes and the currents start bringing the boat back to the shore. What I'm saying is sometimes God has to give you some rocks. Some rocks of this trials, some rocks of persecution to push you back, Bring you back to where you need to be. And that's why you gotta have Jesus in your life. Because you are going to face, you're gonna face evil. You're gonna face adversity. But it's shown up good to know that in my midnight hour, I can call on the Lord Amen. who made heaven and earth. Yes. Know, know that he will hear. And so, if you're not a child of God, you don't have the privilege of being able to call on Amen. him. And you know you need him because he's been so good to you. He's given you health and strength, whatever portion of it you have. God has been good to you. Won't you decide, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give my life to Jesus Christ. I'm going to, I'm going to believe in him and accept him as my savior. I'm going to repent of my sins. I'm going to turn from trying to do things my way. And I'm going to start doing things Amen. your way. I'm going to confess him Amen. as being the son of God and go down in water for the remission of sins which will make you a new creation in Christ Jesus, add you to his church, give you his Holy Spirit. You can go on like that Ethiopian eunuch, on your way rejoicing, that knowing 
that when you face the trials, you got somebody who's on your side. You hear you're a child of God and you haven't been living up to what God would have you to do. Just know, just know that God is so good that he's willing to accept you and willing to embrace you if you would come on back to him. Whatever your need is, we ask you to come right now as we stand and as we sing the song of invitation. Restore my spirit, Lord, I need restore. Lord, you know that my heart is weary. Please help me. Let the church say amen. amen. What a powerful message this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Bradshaw. To this end, we want to recognize um, God's word doesn't come back to him void, and uh, we want to recognize Nora uh, Minor. Please come forth. Amen. Nora, I want to ask you one question. Do you believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes. Blessed are you for that confession brought death to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who will bring life to you anew after you've completed your baptism in the watery grave of baptism and arising to walk in the newness of life. All your sins have been washed away. You may go this way and we'll baptize you shortly. Again, a, such a powerful message this morning from Brother John Bradshaw. Amen. Shall we receive good at the hands of God, and shall we not receive evil? Amen. All of our lessons are worth going back over and uh, going back over and over. We have several of our members who have, have, re, have sent in cards, and we want to recognize them and we want to ask them to be you've always got family everybody say Oh, so blue. Oh, so blue. 
And this is how the story goes The future can't hurt me no more And this is how the story goes And this is how the story I can't afford to worry no more Got, got to be a good soldier And my life I have to preserve Waste my life pacing to grow Worried about the day that has not even come oh, this is how the story goes This is how the story goes The future can't hurt me no more The future can't hurt me no more and this is how the story goes and this is how it's gonna go and this is how the story goes and this is, this is how it's got to go Gonna kick down, kick down the front Of the day that I left my fear behind me and said, This is how the story goes. This is how the story the goes. Future can't hurt me no more. This is how the story goes. 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 Gotta declare peace on my own life. Tomorrow's not promised, so why keep wasting precious time? Time, time, and time. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Yes. Blessed are you for that confession brought death to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but will bring life to you anew after you've completed your obedience by being buried with him in the watery grave of baptism and walking to and arising to walk in the newness of life. All your sins will be washed away. You may go this way and we'll baptize you shortly. Amen.
Cause all your circumstances My God can move many mountains If you put the problems in his head When I was standing when I was down oh, In the valley oh, I know he lifted me up He lifted me up To the mountain to the high quick announcements in regarding the offering that we would no longer be receiving the offering out in the foyer that we will pick up the offering in the auditorium immediately following the prayer over the offering upon confession of your faith that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, it is by his authority that I now baptize you, a repentant believer, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, for remission of your sins. Amen. upon confession of your faith that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. It is by his authority that I now baptize you, a repentant believer, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit for remission of your sins. Amen. One more time for the offering. Um, we will no longer be collecting the offering in four year that will be picked up in the auditorium this morning. And now for our scripture reading for the collection, it will be taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses one and two, and I'll be reading from the New King James versions. And it reads, now concerning the collections for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even though, even so do ye, Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store that as God has prospered him, that there will be no gathering when I come. Let us pray. Dear most heavenly and gracious Father, Father, we come to you as humbly as we can, thanking you for giving us this opportunity to be able to give back a small portion that you have blessed us with. And Father, we pray that these funds that are collected here today, that they be used to, the, uh, to continue the kingdom. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you go to our website, there will be, if you click on the link to give, there will be the ways that you can give. And again, we will be collecting the offering here today. Thank you.
friend like you. This life is filled with sorrow and troubles in below. We often make to wonder just why it should be so. In every tribulation, this life must bring to view. Oh Lord, we need a friend like you. Well, oh Lord, we need a Savior upon this weary road. We need someone to guide us and share our heavy load. We need someone to love us. Amen. Heaven, we had a wonderful service this morning, and the Lord have uh, several announcements uh, to make. Uh, first of all, I'd like to recognize those that are visiting with us uh, today. We have Dubray Jones, and we ask that you please stand as I call your name so we may recognize you. Amen. Thank you for coming our way. Um, she's just visiting with us, and she's a guest of Alicia Evans. She's from the Jackson Street Church of Christ, Palomar, California, in San Diego. And thank you for coming our way. We have Alicia Fisher. Alicia in the audience. Amen. Came with relatives. And a guest of Alicia Evans, the Welch Street Congregation in Wichita Falls, Texas. Amen. And also we have... Uh, Khadija uh, Kirkendall from uh, Nashville, Tennessee, amen. A guest of Alicia Evans, and she's from the Jackson Street Church of Christ in Nashville. And we appreciate y'all coming uh, today, and uh, thank you, Alicia, for bringing your, your friends and relatives, and uh, we'll be at your Godspeed as you travel back homeward, amen. Uh, a couple of announcements. Um, the uh, share is coming up September the 10th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. and it's entitled Jesus Christ, the Providence of Power. And uh, uh, we ask that you please avail yourselves to that and you may go out on the website and see more information uh, concerning that. The summer series uh, will be wrapping up uh, this Wednesday uh, with called Handling Conflict. Be Angry and Sin Not, come from Genesis 13 and 8, by Gary Cohorn from Preston Crest uh, Church of Christ. Uh, registration for the fall classes um, is now underway. That's on Wednesday night. Uh, for all age groups, you may go out on the website and uh, see that uh, and sign up. Uh, Wednesday night Bible class underway. Um, Amen. And let's see, Brunching with a Twist is sponsored by the team ministry, the, uh, the emerging adult ministry will take place in the Family Life Center on September the 11th. And this is for ages 18 to 29. And you may sign up now and registration will end on the 8th. The College and Career Readiness Workshop is now open. Use the QR code in the bulletin or on the screen to register students in grades 6 through 12 and their parents. Um, the Ladies' Workshop is currently registering through the QR code found in the Gazette in the uh, atrium uh, after worship or at gacoc.org. The theme is, Am I Growing Through What I Am Going Through? Is there a lesson in the loss? The event is Saturday, uh, October the 1st from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. and registration ends September the 11th. The healthcare ministry is hosting the Power of Us Growth in Mental Health on Saturday, October the 8th from 10 a.m. to noon and registration for the Singles Retreat Strong Spiritual Significant is accessible through uh, GACOC.org. The cost is $160 for 
for all activities, including the round trip chartered bus of $120 if you provide transportation. The event is Friday, uh, uh, October the 21st through Sunday the 23rd at Camp Blessing in Brenham, Texas, and Bluebell is not guaranteed. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Just reading it. Okay. All righty. Um, there's a couple of others here. Just bear with Brother Hart here. The uh, uh, Greenville Avenue Child Development Center is now enrolling uh, children ages 18 months through five years of age for those who uh, need to know this as well as if you know families who need good child care at that age, 18 months to five years of age five years of age. And we have one um, Church of Christ at Eastside in Austin. They have a Ladies Day program on September the 17th, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And it's entitled, Am I Doing That? And we have several of our members who will be keynote speakers and uh, guest speakers uh, on this program as well as panel discussion. And so avail yourselves to the bulletin. Uh, the, for men, now men, listen up, the Brotherhood of Men's Conference, No Surrender, No Retreat, and this is put on by Brother uh, Emmanuel White and the uh, Forest Hill Congregation. It's for our men, October the 27th through the 29th. Okay. October 27th through the 29th. Uh, we're asking um, our ladies, please send your men to that. Uh, this is the closest thing to getting them fixed. And uh, so they will come back correct and upright after this session because iron sharpens iron, okay? All righty, so that's September the 27th through the 29th. And also, um, put on by Dallas West, the Red Tie Gala, Botham Jean Affair, and that's uh, September the 24th. Uh, ladies, 6,000 Sisters, 6,000 Steps for Hope, Breast Cancer Walk and Expo. It's not just pink, it's personal. And that's September the 24th um, from 8 a.m. to 12 uh, p.m. And I also have another announcement. Brother and Sister Gibbs are in Longview. Brother Gibbs is in a gospel meeting, and that's why he's not here uh, today. I um, have one card I want to make sure that I read. Um, this is from Sister Camille uh, Atkins to my GACC family. I want to thank everyone uh, for you and for your prayers and phone calls and texts and messages, uh, cards and all other acts of love shown to me during my surgery and also during my time of uh, grief and the death of my loved one. And she's just saying, uh, uh, she thought she had sent this in, but uh, she just gave it to us and we appreciate you, Sister Atkins, amen. Um, we want to recognize those that have been baptized at this time. Of all the important things that we've done today, this is one of the most important. We have two new brothers in Christ. We have Dallas Provo, and we have Noah Minor. Turn around and see your church family. Amen. 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 This is the most important decision that you have will make in your life. Of course, you're too young to recognize that, but you will after a while. Amen. The angels in heaven are rejoicing, and we are rejoicing. And we are so thankful for your parents and for all your teachers who have been teaching you. And may God bless you as you begin your Christian walk. And as we dismiss, we ask everyone, please come on down and extend to them the right hand of fellowship. Amen. Amen. You may take your seats. Amen. We're going to have a closing song and a prayer. Amen. Show, show me.
afternoon church let us pray heavenly and gracious father first and foremost we want to thank you and uh, for and have you welcome the two new souls into your body and what a beautiful blessing that is and let us open our arms and accept them and guide them through their walk and we just want to thank you for all your continued blessings that you bestow upon us uh, the ones that we're grateful of and the ones that we are uh, not aware enough to be grateful of God and we thank you for the beautiful lesson today and we ask that you be with us and give us travel and grace wherever we're going this week and uh, that you just keep us in sound mind and body and bring us back in the same condition next week it's in Jesus name we pray amen Nobody told me. Nobody told me. 